name is Janusz Martin, and this is a new episode of My Pride, My Story. My guest today is Haley, International Miss Letter 2019, and we're going to talk about her coming out and about her first Pride experience. Haley, I ask everyone, so I have to ask you also, when was the first time that you felt that you are different? Oh my god, um, little kid. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I've always uh, been in this weird place um, coming out. Um, there's been multi multiple coming outs for me. Um, it's been just one thing after another, after another, after another. First, it was coming to terms with that I'm, I might be bi. I might like all the people. I might like um other people that are similar to me and not similar to me and um that was a turning point for me that that happened in like middle school high school where i started really putting thought into okay would i date somebody of the same sex and i really started putting thought towards that um then i'm also trans so there's a uh, that inner struggle. And I've known that I've been different in that way since probably about the same time, actually, or if not longer. Um, there was definitely uh, bits and pieces throughout um, my childhood of going, I don't quite fit in. I don't fit in with either group, really. I felt somewhere in the middle. I felt like I was alone, a loner sort of thing. Um, life got a lot better. <laughs> um, started seeing, you know, examples, and I decided to uh, take a plunge, as you were, if you want to say it that way, and I started pursuing my path probably in my late teens. Um, that, that was when I started really coming into my own and learning more about myself and finding the terminology. And that's when the internet essentially entered my life in a way where I was actually able to um, do the research, to look up the terms, to figure out who I am, where I fit in. Um, is there other people like me? Um, and what are the social consequences? Because, um, yeah, I did not grow up in the most accepting area of the world. I grew up in uh, the Central Valley of, of California, which is heavily um, right-wing based. So there's a lot of Christians, a lot of good old boys. They're willing to put you in your place. And um, I had a fight with a lot of that. But uh, coming out was an interesting thing for me. Um, I did it in multiple stages, like I said, and it was mostly coming out to myself first. And then I had to start coming out to other people, especially when I started dating people of the same gender that I was presenting as or... Um, Better yet, when I came out as trans, um, the one story that I always tell people that kind of makes people laugh and cringe at the same time is I was trying to figure out how to tell my mother about it. And this was the day before um, April Fool's, and I didn't realize it. So it was day before April 1st, and I'm sitting there on the porch, and my mom sees that, you know, something's bothering me, and I should tell her what's going on because I could tell her about anything. So I tell her about this, and she accuses me of um, playing a practical joke on her, and she didn't actually come around and believe what I said for multiple weeks. She thought I was joking. She thought I was uh, making um, a big joke. She kept going back and forth like, wait, you're really serious. No, you're really serious? Are you sure you're serious? So that was difficult. So not only did I have to come out, I also had to reassure her that I was actually coming out. And then I had to educate her on what it meant that I was coming out. So that meant me finding all the resources, sending her books, um, having lots and lots of conversations with her. With your mom, it went quite easy, but did you have also some harsh reactions from family or friends? Mm -hmm. 
I got disowned by my mom's uh, greater family. So my uncle and her, or and his aunt, I got disowned by them. I, uh, they were a major part of my upbringing. My uncle was a surrogate father figure for me for a lot of years. Um, so that was really painful and really hurtful. Um, my dad's side of the family, uh, they pretended at first that it was okay and basically did everything to say the contrary throughout um, our relationship. Um, it took until I got married about uh, five years ago. Uh, that was the final straw for me. I kept um, making exceptions and making space for them, hoping that they would grow and become more accepting of who I was. I was trying to give the benefit of a doubt to them, um, even after they had done a lot of emotional abuse to me. Um, but uh, that was another uh, very traumatic instance where um, my dad was supposed to walk me down the aisle when I got married. And he didn't even give me the courtesy of telling me that he wasn't showing up, that my entire dad side of the family, my um, my father's side of the family, none of them showed up and didn't give an RSVP, didn't tell me they weren't coming, nothing of the sort, just didn't show, even after agreeing to help me <laughs> get married, essentially, walk me down the aisle and things of that sort. So there was that as well. Um, those were probably the most jarring because I always thought that my father would show up. I always, you know, had in the back of my mind that, you know, he shows up for the important things and that I can at least rely on him to do that and come to find out I couldn't. And that was when I really had to walk away from that toxic situation. Um, there's a lot of other instances out there, like, you know, first transitioning and people trying to kill you, beat you up, whatever. Um, the whole coming out to your friend groups and having to educate. Um, I was the first uh, uh, trans woman in many different communities I was a part of at the time. Um, I was the first trans woman in the goth group that I was uh, affiliated with. I was the first uh, goth girl with uh, um, the kink fetish BDSM leather community that I was a part of in Sacramento. I was uh, the first one to be accepted into a women's group there. And that meant that I had to fight for that space and to educate and to um, also be willing to learn from them as they learn from me. And that was really difficult. Um, it was really rewarding and I'm very happy that I, you know, made those strides, but it was also pretty jarring. At what age you started the transition process and you immediately started to take hormones and what was the reaction of your body to the hormones? Imagine going through puberty a second time in like a very intense, very abrupt kind of way. Um, I started taking, uh, so I started transitioning in my early teens. I have known since I was a little kid that I um, was not, uh, I, can't, I can't think of the acronym for it, but the I, I did not identify as male. I didn't. And I hit the point where um, it was all or nothing. Um, I was in a very dark place. I knew this was hitting me in a way that I couldn't deal with. So I made the decision to run with it, go do it. Because if I don't, I'm probably going to kill myself kind of a thing. And I started um, with hormones when I was, uh, I think, 19 or 20. And I think it was 19 I started hormones. I started um, 
tracking down all of the resources I needed. I had to find an endocrinologist. I had to find a therapist. I had to find a psychiatrist. And I had to find all these people who would write off saying that, sure, yeah, she's pretty sure she wants to go do this. Um, but that experience of having to go through that, I equate with a a second um, puberty, essentially. And this has been well over 10 years for me now. And I think I'm 14 years in, 13, 14 years of uh, transitioning. And um, yeah, it was really intense. It was a lot of emotional baggage I had to work through. Um, I, uh, it was uh, it it was liberating, and it also brought a lot of things to the forefront for me because um, hormones are not fast; they take time. So it was these very gradual changes that I was seeing that were those empowering moments when you start seeing your body start changing, the skin softens, you hear your voice drop an octave, you, or raise an octave. I, I, it did not drop for me. <laughs> um, I, I was very fortunate. It actually raised my voice. Um, but, you know, my smell changed, my skin changed, my, my hips, my butt, my uh, tits, everything started changing and started making me feel more comfortable in my own skin. Um, uh, it was also the learning curve of um, how, how do you dress like a woman who's not a whore? <laughs> um, it, was, uh, I, it was a lot. There was a lot of dysphoria that goes along with it because it's all new, it's all learning, and you're all always trying to do the next thing and try to be the best you and to become what, become the woman that's in your mind, essentially. And I think every woman goes through that. You know, we all do the adventure stages, just mine was a little more accelerated because, you know, it, I can now, essentially. So it was liberating, it was also difficult. Um, there was some people in my life that definitely made it more, more attainable and more easy for me to go through. They kind of coached me and pushed me in the right directions and, you know, told me when I was dressing like a hussy or told me when I needed to let loose a little bit and quit looking so conservative. What do you think, what is the right age to start the transitioning? When you're ready. Um, I am very happy that there are more resources out there than I had. I had to fight and I had to dig and I had to find all of these resources that really didn't exist at all. It was such an underground thing. So few people were transitioning. When I first started transitioning, you know, the numbers of people who had bottom surgery were in the tens. They, they weren't even in the hundreds yet. Um, there was these, uh, it was very hidden. The, the resources weren't there. And now that it is, I feel like people have the ability to be more aware, be more, more educated. Um, if I was to do it again, I would probably say in high school, I probably would have started on hormones. I would have done it earlier. I would have um, found the resources, been able to explain it to my parents at a time where you know, when I was actually that age, I couldn't. I didn't have the terminology for myself. I just knew I was different. I knew that it was not not where I belonged. Um, but yeah, um, that's difficult. I think everyone's journey is different. I think that um, it's all individual. I think that you transition when you're ready and don't let anyone tell you any different. I don't think you should be pressured to go one way or the other before you're ready.
Do you think there is enough information, enough talk on the sexual education classes in the schools about trans people so the young people can make their own decisions? I don't believe there's enough talk in school about it because at least here in America, we don't even cover um, different sexualities because uh, so much of the country is very secularized. They're all, um, well, not secular, um, they're all very religious based and they don't want to talk about alternative sexuality in any right. So it's not a covered topic. Um, I don't believe there's enough uh, discussion on any of that. Um, there's a huge push in America for abstinence only education that only covers heterosexual um, couples. So talk about it, no. Um, I believe there's more resources out there. I believe that uh, parents are becoming more aware, which is good. And I believe that um, there is the there is a way to actually be trans and be young at the same time. Um, I don't think you have to wait until you're out of out of school to transition anymore. I think that there's now becoming protections and there's ways to be safe about it because my biggest thing for a transitioning youth is bullying. I think that is the biggest thing to overcome. And with the big initiatives around anti-bullying and protecting our youth, I think that it is an era where you could transition as a child. But as for education around it, I don't think it's there. I don't think there's any education around uh, trans people around being queer, around being anything other than the heteronormative standard. Let's move to some funnier stories. How was your first Pride experience? My first Pride experience, um, I didn't actually go to Pride. Um, I went to San Francisco and my mom my mom's pretty queer friendly and all of that. And we didn't think anything about it being uh, San Francisco Pride weekend. We ended up in San Francisco and we're down at the wharf or something. We're going and getting lunch. And there's all of these uh, contingents walking by with like the big balloon peacock, fe um, the balloon peacock, um, uh, Oh, I can't even think of what they're called, like the wings, essentially. And they're walking around and we're looking at all the gay men and going, what is going on? And then someone finally went, it's Pride weekend. You came during Pride. So I, I had the experience of getting to see a lot of the different people who were marching in Pride outside of Pride context. So it wasn't like going to the parade. It wasn't actually being engrossed in everything that was going on, but it was definitely an exposure of going, oh, look, there's all of these amazing people being fabulous around me. Um, that was when I was in my early teens, I want to say. I was like 11, 12, somewhere in there. Um but my first actual pride, I think I was like 17 or 18, and it was a small town pride. It was Sacramento. I went to that. It was very lackluster. I did not understand the concept of all of it. Um, a, a year or two later, I ended up at San Francisco Pride again, which was amazing. And... <laughs> It was actually funny before I went to San Francisco Pride, I ended up at Folsom Street Fair. So I had completely different expectations of what it was going to be like. I was just like, oh, it's going to be like Folsom. No, Folsom is a different beast. Um, so I, I would actually say that Folsom Street Fair was kind of my first official like Pride event. And that was when I was... 19 I want to say. Um, I went with my partner at the time and a bunch of our friends and uh, 
yeah, it was the first time that I very much felt like I was surrounded by like-minded people and that I was free to be myself. And that's always what pride symbolized to me was that um, rebellion against what is expected. It's that freedom to say, I can be who I want to be. What do you think? Should pride become just a celebration of the LGBTQ plus community or it should maintain its protest part? I think that it's both. I think that it should be a celebration. I think that it should be um, a big welcoming experience because that's ultimately what community is, is trying to bring people together and show them that they're not alone. Um, I think that serves a huge purpose to pride. Um, I also believe that there are things we're still fighting for. And I don't think that'll ever go away, unfortunately. As much as I would love to say that everything will be super queer friendly in the future, it, we have a lot of work to do. We have a long ways to go. So I, I agree that it should be a, a protest. It should be a statement. It should be that we're, we're showing up and we're making a statement by being in the streets and going along and saying that we have identity and we are valid. Um, so yeah, I think it should be both. Um, I don't think it should, should be a riot. I think we're past that. I don't think we need to be, uh, you know, uh, tearing each other down or t trying to tear apart um, any institution by doing so, but I think that we should be uh, putting our foot down saying, look, we are here, we are here in numbers, and we are valid. You said you had different stages of your coming out process. When did you realize that you are a fetish person, that you're into kink? My first memories of knowing that I was kinky were, were probably like 14 or 15, I found an old, uh, um, I think it was like a penthouse or a hustler or something like that, some nudie magazine that was stashed somewhere. I found this thing and this girl was all tied up and uh, was wearing a bunch of restraints. And I was like, oh, that's really fucking hot. I'm not sure if I want her or if I want to be with her but that's really fucking hot. And that was my earliest memory of being kinky. Um, but uh, pro in my late teens, I started pursuing it more. I started uh, um, going to munches and finding more community. And before I was supposed to, um, I found online communities. It was during the time of message boards and um, chat rooms and things of that sort. And I was able to carry on conversations like I was normal, talking about fetish, kink, subversive nature, whatever it may be, going, I'm kind of into these things and then being like, it, that's fine. So are we, welcome. <laughs> Um, when I first like joined the community, it was when I was 18 because that's the uh, legal age here. And I'm not going to say that I was part of a community before then in s keeping in legalities and things of the sort, but I started going to munches, gatherings, um, socials. I started going to a lot of parties. Um, yeah, I started, I started pretty young. Um, I've known for a really long time that my sexuality was a little out there. <laughs> when you entered the International Miss Leather Contest, was there any issue? With me being trans? Yes. So, uh, for the viewers, I guess, um, I am the first, uh, um, trans woman to have ever won International Miss Leather. Um, there has been a, uh, there's been two, uh, uh, trans women that have been International Miss Boot Black, but International Miss Leather, I'm the first. Um, for me, uh, 
it wasn't a huge deal because I made it a point to say that I wanted to be more than just my transness. I didn't want to be known as the trans imsel. I that is not what I wanted my um my memory to be. So or uh, my legacy to be. That is not where I wanted to come from. That's not what I wanted to do. I feel that is a very small part of me. I feel that I have much more to offer. My whole stance on um, IMSL has been to welcome people in, to see the people on the fringes, the wallflowers, and make them feel a part of the community. That has been what I've been pushing my entire title year. Um, it was, a, there were comments, there were lots and lots of comments about um, the same things that Jack went through, um, where, you know, I only got it because I'm trans, um, because that I am the illegitimate imsel because I didn't have a massive class to compete against. I was the illegitimate imsel because I only won because I was trans and there were comments like that and a lot of anger and spite and there's still people out there that have that whole turf mentality of um I shouldn't be allowed to be imsel there are still people out there that go this is a women's only title and only women should win and my response is well I'm a woman and I've identified as one for a very, very long time. And um, thankfully, there's more people backing me than fighting me. And um, yeah, it comes with complications, but it also comes with that idea that I'm paving a path for whoever's next, that it's only becoming more inclusive and becoming less exclusive. Um, I never really set out to uh, break any big barriers down or anything of that sort. I just ran to do what I wanted to do. And that was to tell people to be nice to each other, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, I did have struggles. I did have um, haters and... Um, people who gave some pretty intense uh, dissent, but um, at the end of the day, I, I did it. I'm here. You can't really take it from me now. <laughs> if you could be again 11, 12, what kind of advice would you give to your younger self? That one's hard. Um, quit worrying about what other people think. I would try to tell my younger self in a way that would be something along the lines of don't play into what people want you to be. Um, I got myself into a position where I was listening too much to what others wanted and I was trying my hardest to overcompensate for gender identity. So I was, um, I went hyper, hyper masculine for a lot of years and I did the hyper masculine jobs and I learned all the hyper masculine skills and I tried to be the dudeliest of all the dudes and um, I wish I didn't. I wish I would have just owned who I was and did the work to find out who I was and where I belonged and would have been able to come to terms with my identity much, much sooner.